ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, I am Clementine, and as always, I am Super Saiyan! But never mind that. In this video, I'll show you how to go locked up sewing machine and start ripping pieces off of it and flipping it over and beating other pieces out of the inside of it with a hammer to make the perfect little device for winding your own custom pickup. I will do just exactly that. Slap it in the test mule guitar, hook it up to a cranked up tube amp and make some sounds like this. <laughs> I will show and explain the entire process in detail, so if this sounds like something you might be interested in, STAY TUNED! Roll that beautiful bean footage. I did the first pickup experiment on this channel four years ago, and I wound a pickup by hand. And it takes a long ass time. So when I did the wooden P90, I stuck it to the end of a sewing machine and spun it up that way and it works great. You have a speed control under your foot so you can use both of your hands. This is the method I've been using since and I made a lot of good pickups this way but the problem is that uh, it's still slow and it only gets slower because there's too many moving parts in a sewing machine and it gets hot as a firecracker and I pretty much wore that one out. And my shop's done now and I need to make a whole bunch of high quality professional looking pickups so my answer is this old Singer sewing machine from probably the early 60s. When you turn it by hand, you can feel that it's real tight. There's stuff crunching and shit in there. It has binding and timing issues and ain't never gonna sew again. The poor little motor's real strong, but it can't turn it over. That's all good. We just gotta figure out how to roll this crusty winch over and bust off in it and, and beat the guts out of it. Old saw machine looks simple as hell. But with the help of electro digital x-ray vision, we can see that shit ain't. There's rods and watsy does it and cams and doobly doos and shafts going every which way inside here. Pickup winder ain't nothing but a box with a spinning flywheel on the side. So the right thing to do would be to take all this apart, and I'm not a sadist. So ain't nobody got time for that. So I lay old girl down for surgery, start pulling all the panels off and trying to see if I can figure out how to disable and remove all the pieces. So I started popping off rod caps and taking off all the set screws I could see everywhere. I just basically kept rolling and flipping this thing and looking inside of it and turning it and figure out everything I could do to unhook each system from the inside. Luckily though, a lot of these parts are cast, so if you do resort to violence and just start beating the hell out of it, it'll break. You can just rip it out of there. This can possibly cause something to lock up, you can just beat it more and unlock it. Might have to use different types of violence, like delicate violence, precise violence, strong violence, supplemented with calm violence. Sometimes you have to stop and think about what you're doing, look at the way things work, return to center, and then return to violence. And now that everything's unhooked from that main shaft, she's loose like a race engine. Everything except that bobbin wander. We'll talk a little bit about that later. So I'll hook the pedal up to it to see if it'll actually turn itself now. It turns great. So I'm thinking race engine. Huh. I bet nobody's put any oil in this thing in years. So my dumbass grabbed a bottle of Lucas and I just started pouring it inside of there. Putting it in the holes that you oil the bearings and forcing them full with pressure. Let's see how fast it is now. Yeah, I did that. Don't do that. Yeah, it only took about two, two and a half hours to clean all that crap out of there and then flush it out with liquid wrench and get it back going again. I don't have to worry about it being lubricated now and it ended up being really fast. Ah, here's the idea I had for leaving that um, bobbin winder hooked up. You can see here that if I connect a arm to it, I can get it to act like a cam at a 5 to 1 ratio to create an automatic traverse attachment. I'll be able to stack about four bobbins on here and just walk away like the original Gibson auto winder that they used to do all those old PAFs. This actual cam on the main shaft up here is another perfect coincidental feature for using a sewing machine as a pickup winder. If you mount one of these cheap tally counters in there where that cam will bump the button, you got a fully contained digital winding counter. Hell, you could be the mega hipster king if you use one of those analog digital counters from a cargo ship. Alternatively, you could mount a reed switch in there and run it to a digital display and have the exact same thing that you have in a professional pickup winder. But ain't none of that necessary for making a pickup, so we're gonna slap all the panels back on here and then somehow use a rag that's dirtier than the sewing machine to clean it. Science! 
This is a plastic single coil pickup bobbin of the most cheap ass variety. It lost its heart and innards in previous videos. As you can see, I sanded and redrilled the eyelets to accept new wire, so this victim of my quest for knowledge may be resurrected and sing once again. All I gotta do is attach the pickup to this knob so it'll spin. Legit, like a piece of double-sided tape will do it. But like I said, I'm gonna be winding a lot of pickups. So, most commercially produced pickups have a center pin locator hole. So if I punch and drill a hole right in the center of this flywheel, I'll be able to locate the pickup quickly and tap it right on there. And now that the pickup is mounted on center, I can take finishing nails and tap them through each of the other pickup mounting holes. Now I simply remove the pickup bobbin, drill the two dimples, and now this type of bobbin can be easily and repeatedly centered and quickly and securely mounted using two machine screws. Pickup wire we'll be using today is a 42 gauge poly. This is just the cheapest, most basic type of bulk pickup wire that you can get. This stuff's so thin it's hard to get it to show up on camera. So I'm going to double it up and twist it to try to make this easier to see. What you've got to do is feed it through the eyelet and loop it. I decided to do these seven times and make them lucky. You just want to make sure that it's tied off good and there's plenty there to solder to and then you're going to start wrapping the coil by hand or at least I do. And I ain't even worried about that tail. It's just going to get sucked into the coil. <laughs> ain't going to hurt nothing. It'll be way down in there where nobody knows. I found that the way that I like to set up to wind is to get on the corner or end of a desk or table and set the roll of pickup wire on the ground on its side at my feet. That way it can coil off the top with zero tension. Right now is a good time to go ahead and check the tension on your bobbin screws and make sure it's mounted good and that it's flat. One of the most helpful things is to just grab the wire and go through the motions of winding. Pretend you're winding and see if you're uncomfortable, if your elbows are gonna hit something, if the wire might grab something and break. And now you're ready to pull up a chair and jazz a side. Watch me lock into this and go completely dead face doll eyes. I didn't just have a psychotic break. I'm just having to look at this thing. It's hauling so much ass. You have to look at it a certain way. Check this out. My eyes are crossed. I'm looking over my glasses on purpose. Oh yeah, there you go. Dead shark eye. What I'm doing is focusing on this edge of the coil right here and looking right through it so that I can see it perfectly like a hologram, if that makes any sense. About that time, I straightened my eyes up, looked up, and said, oh crap, this thing's getting full quick. So I shut her down, checked the coil, and then in less than two minutes, this is where we got. That's probably about one and a half, two K of wire. So when I start it back up, I just go to scatter one in like crazy. That's a buzzword in pickup making, and this is gonna make the pickup sound a lot clearer because it's getting the wires away from each other. But the reason I'm actually doing this is to build up that coil as big as I can with as least wires I can like a bird nest so I don't end up putting $5 worth of wire on a 25 cent pickup coil for a video about a sewing machine. When doing wacky loose caricature winding such as this, you may find that you have a loop or two come off the side, catch and lay loose. You can always just take those, fold them up, press them into the coil, cover them up, and keep going. As long as that wire's not broken, you're fine. And now that the bulk of the bobbin's filled up with those loose wines, I'm just gonna spin it up to top speed, lock it down, and pretend I'm a robot. I'm keeping a lot of tension on this wire, just moving as much like a machine as I can. And that's how you can get a tight, pretty, uniform coil like this. So now we can just break the wire, pull out the screws, do the fiddly ass job of feeding all that wire through that eyelid over and over again, stick a pickup lead up through that hole in the middle, and then solder the hell out of them eyelets. And I do mean solder the hell out of them eyelets. You want to melt all that polyurethane off them pickup wires. I wrap the coal in some pickup tape, glue a magnet to the back, Set it down for a good soak in the liquid wax bath. The purpose of this is to let that wax soak into that coil where all those loose wines are and kind of glue them down when it cools off. That way it won't vibrate and feedback, which is what causes that squilling when you turn the amp up too loud. After most bubbles stop, I just pull it out of there and dry it off with a paper towel. Watch out, it'll burn the hell out of you. And now that it cooled off a while, I can finally see if it's gonna even work in 4.3K. Ain't that too weak? Nah, that's good for a scatter wound ceramic magnet. And to demonstrate that, I've slapped this pickup into a piece of pick guard. Now I'm gonna 
stick it in the test and you'll get tar with some double sided tape. Hook up the alligator clips and run a naked wire into a Chinesium tube amp from Amazon.com. Purposefully tune one string three cents too sharp for all the haters and we can see how that works. that just about does it for this video if you found this educational or entertaining in any way please like and maybe subscribe i am clementine you are watching heavy metal atc till next time